What could be better than one rewound microwave oven transformer? Well, how about two? How about stereo transformers? 22 amps. 18.42, and look at that. I've just created a shack heater. Okay, from the get-go, this video is not a how-to video. Microwave ovens have very, very dangerous voltages inside. They have substances like beryllium, which are dangerous to breathe in. They have charged capacitors that can give you a belt even when the device is not plugged in. My advice to you would be, if you don't know what you're doing, or you have no real good reason to be doing this, don't do it. Now, this project has been about repurposing a microwave transformer for use in a linear power supply. And I have already discovered that uh, when I was actually measuring current on the initial transformer that I did the rewind on, that my current meter was having issues and that the draw current was in fact 1.75 amps, which is basically what people were saying to expect and that the, the core operates in saturation. Now, when I left that um, transformer on for a good half hour, well, here's confirmation that my current meter or my current meter setup was not um, doing what it was supposed to. I think I may have had a spade connector that was um, put on not very well. And I'm suspecting the meter's dodgy as well. And uh, as I've been told, this is drawing about 1.6 amps of current. Can I have a half hour timer, please? All right, 30 minutes. And we're starting now. And it's, it's warm. I wouldn't want to keep my hand on there. This indicates that the idle current is too high. And we're going to go, or we're going to try a plan B, which is to spread the 240 volts across the primary of two and see what we end up with when we do that. This may be a complete waste of time. And I'm sure that um, some people will say, why are you going to such lengths when you could just buy yourself a transformer? But everything you see on the floor in front of you has cost me zero. I'm just enjoying seeing what happens seeing if there is a way to create a, a transformer that's going to meet my needs. It got uncomfortably hot. What's better than one transformer? How about two? Now, you may be thinking, well, if one gets hot, two's going to be way worse. Well, that's not actually the case. Um, I was reading uh, in Drew Diamond's uh, Projects for the Radio Amateur, I can't remember which volume, um, he was discussing the rewinding of these transformers for high tension type tube supplies and uh, he mentioned the fact that you could uh, mitigate that very very large magnetizing current that happens when the transformer is not under load by putting two that are of similar size and make and parameters and have the primaries in series and by doing that you get a lower magnetizing current Now we're going to need a load to load test both our power supply and these transformers. I ordered some nichrome wire. This is only 28 gauge, but what I've done is I've basically gotten eight strands of it, twisted them together, and I've created myself a load that's approximately an ohm. So at the moment, the secondaries on these transformers that are paired up, I've squeezed extra turns through each of them because on my initial test uh, with the primaries in series I actually ended up with a voltage that was a little bit lower so I've now got about 22 volts on the secondary so hopefully I'll get about 22 amps coming out. The question on everyone's lips is how many microwaves must die to satisfy one ham's curiosity? Now I was told I need a ceramic former for this nichrome wire load. Um, it obviously gets very, very hot. Necessity is the mother of invention and I've gone out and um, found this old clay grate and I've wound this nichrome wire through it 
and this will provide the provision for a number of different loads should I need them and I will hold on to it and I'll just chuck it at the back of the shed behind the uh, ever increasing junk pile so that if I ever do need to do a load test I've got something that uh, I can provide a load from and the 64 million dollar question was if we connect our primaries in series do we lower that really nasty idle current and with this wide up we have an idle current of 330 so I'm just gonna have a quick look at um, what the uh, secondaries are doing and we'll go from there so now we're going to do a load test and we've got the uh, clamp meter on the primary see what that does and we have the voltmeter on the secondary see how much that voltage drops and three two one action so we've got 18.4 volts and 2.26 amps on the primary and now we've put the clamp meter on the secondary we're going to look at the uh, current on our secondary 22 amps twenty two amps eighteen point four two and look at that I've just created a shack heater a smoking shack heater Now that nichrome wire is probably getting up into the thousands of degrees heat wise and it is smoking those plastic connectors. This is switched off at the moment so I can feel these. The actual um, windings have not um, increased in temperature at all. I expect a little bit of heat near the nichrome but even here not, uh, not noticeably warm. So that is the load test. We can jump off to the blackboard and just do a quick rough calculation of what's happening with, uh, with the power in and power out. Now a quick look at the uh, stats for the transformer. We had on the primary 2.26 amps and on the secondary 22 amps. Our primary voltage is nominally 230 volts, which is Australian supply. And our secondary voltage is 18.4 volts. Um, so our primary is um, looking at a power of 519.8 watts and our secondary was 404.8 watts. So there's a difference of about 115 watts. So I'm thinking power factor aside, um, considering it's 50 hertz and there's probably not too much going on in that area, I've assumed a, a factor of one. Um, you may disagree with that assumption and you might be able to school me on why that is so wrong. And um, we've um, got a, an efficiency of 78%, which to me sounded not that good, but uh, typically a linear supply you're looking at 60% efficiency so you lose 40% of your power through things like pass transistors and voltage regulators and all that sort of good stuff so it's not as alarming as it sounds we'll just head off to the shack and I'm going to show you the supply I'm presently using and discuss why it's even less alarming um, than it presently seems <laughs> And this is my current shack power supply. It's a switch mode power supply. It was very, very noisy and I've done a video. So jump in the hand playlist below if you want to see how I put the Drew Diamond filtering circuit. I first took a very simple filtering circuit that I devised my, on my own. And then I went and did the Drew Diamond design. And Drew's, Drew's design was you know, a, a step above. Even the basic thing that I did improved things greatly. 
but I was using a common mode choke. Drew, Drew Diamond's actually filtering both on the mains and on the output, and it's improved things immensely, but it's still not perfect. And so this supply provides 12 amps maximum at a nominal voltage of 13.8 volts. So my plan is to build this linear supply and I will take it for a road test to see whether I can power a 100 watt rig on it just for my own edification. But it's certainly not going to be doing that job on a regular basis. And one of the people on the Facebook page actually said from one of the QRP groups, bit of overkill if you're only running QRP rigs. And that is very, very true. So <laughs> just, I don't know. I just wanted to play with a, a linear supply and see, uh, and see what I could do. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fuse it at 15 amps and just play conservative on what it can do. And I'll be very happy to have that linear supply that's uh, producing a lot less noise. Yes, we all know it's more complex than I indicated. And one of the things that I needed to calculate was the copper losses in the primary and the secondary. So I did a winding resistance check on the primary and the secondary, and I used my power equation I squared R, and um, it adds up, especially at the higher currents. So total loss of copper losses, which is basically the power you're losing in the winding, was 70 watts. So already 70 watts of our 115 watt difference is accounted for just in the copper losses. And then the rest of the losses we'd have to attribute to our core losses, which is 45 watts. Now, two main core losses you're going to be dealing with is the hysteresis losses and the eddy current losses. So eddy currents are is due to flux changing the core, which is inducing a voltage, which of course causes a current, which is a circular current called an eddy current. And that is why your transformer core is laminated. Try and reduce the, uh, the losses that are incurred by those eddy currents. And I'm by no means an expert on transformers, as you can well tell. Um, and also, um, the other loss that you're dealing with is a hysteresis loss. You can imagine all the molecules, the iron molecules in your core, they're all randomly distributed in random directions. When they're magnetized, they all line up like little soldiers in one direction. And then every half cycle, they have to swap in the other direction. And this movement of molecules is going to be consuming energy. Okay, because it's not a perfect process. So you're losing energy in the form of heat in that changing of flux and the direction of those iron molecules, those dipoles. Now, obviously, that loss is going to be attributed largely to the type of material. So your eddy current losses, the type of laminations and how the transformer is constructed and the uh, hysteresis losses is, is um, providing a material that has a lower hysteresis loss. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, like I said, I will not be operating that uh, transformer at anywhere near um, the, the amperage that uh, I just tested it at um, in everyday operation. And so um, I'm very confident now that I can get this transformer to work in a power supply and um, work reliably. Wow, thank you for sticking around right to the end of the video. In the upcoming videos, I plan to show you the adventure of creating a finished linear power supply. We're just waiting for parts to arrive and we'll slowly start building that power supply. And then I have lots of other things in the pipeline as well. Always too many things and work started, so we're very, very busy. But I shall see you in the next episode of The Art of Engineering. 73.